Turn the light on. Get your light on, man. Turn your light on. You need to turn your light on, man. Okay, get your shower shoes on. You set, ready to roll. Just shower shoes, shorts, t-shirt. Screws around neighborhoods. You got him, Jennifer? Check that belt line good. I got this side of school over here. Yep. Go. An inmate confesses to possession of alcohol. Okay. You're being forthcoming and truthful with me uh, carries a lot of weight with me, okay? If you need probes or mirrors, oh, we got to just sign them up, okay? The search turns up a variety of illegal contraband. This little Pluto, a little homemade fermented alcohol. Weapons can be fashioned out of everyday items. It's a pen, but yet because of the tip and the way it's shaped, it could very well be used as a weapon. It's a lighter. It's a light cigarette. Got some coded material here, which is Swahili words and their meaning. In one cell, Officer Phil Rangel finds some coded messages. Kanaz, the money of which has not been paid, and there's the word right there. So, these are codes that they use through the mail. Officer Rangel specializes in breaking inmates' coded messages. Break codes, translate letters. If they want to make a hit on somebody that's at another institution or on the streets, they can use the coded words to be able to uh, convey the message. Most of the uh, gang members that we have here are the Mexican Mafia and the Norteños. They use the Nahuatl as words to disguise information, so we wouldn't be able to pick up on it. A lot of meaning in a lot of these pictures and they draw. They put a lot of thought into them. You really got to look at them close to figure everything out. That's how they end up, smoking too much crack, bound by prison walls and wires. There's your cell block, cells. Just Constantine wire. There he is. Wants to be a biker, but he's stuck. Can't get out. Any medication that does not have their name labeled on it, we take because it's usually contraband. Again, someone's passing it out. Maybe it's gambling debts. Maybe it's some medication that's hard to get in here. Kathy Neely is the newest member of the squad and the only female. In just a few months, she's learned what it's like to deal with some of the most violent and dangerous criminals in captivity. Gangsters, criminals, and they all have a criminal mind. You know, and they've got 24 hours a day to beat us. We've got eight hours that we're here that we try to beat them basically at their own game. Ooh, the smell. Okay, pull it out slow. You do a lot of investigation work, which you don't get to do on a normal basis out there on the line. Um, and that's interesting to me. I'm a nosy person, so, so I'm enjoying that part of it and following through to find, when we do a cell search, to find the drugs or to find the weapons. For many young inmates, Pelican Bay is a part of their criminal education. Escort, come around. He would have to come in and he would have to, he would have to show his respect to those elders or those that are teaching him. There would be inmates actually designated to instruct him on what, how to behave in prison. They, they may be required to move weapons or have family members bring drugs in or make pruner for somebody or hold weapons in their cell. I mean, it's just a way of them guys proving themselves. Two inmates have tested positive on the metal detectors. Check out here, man. Open your mouth. Okay, what we got here is these two guys here. In their cell, we found a cup, a plastic Xylon cup. That's the state issue cup. It was cut. There's still a piece about the serial large in the cell, we discovered. So we're going to tape these guys up, and they're going to be taken to contraband watch, where they're going to spend 72 hours until we get the rest of the cup. Just tape right around we'll tight. The inmates are suspected of hiding weapons on their person. Their clothes will be taped to prevent them from discarding the weapons. When we searched the area out there, we didn't find anything. Just tape them? Yeah, we taped them. We're going to yeah, take I, them up I, top. I okay. Give them, we'll give them about half an hour up there to see if they want to... We're going to go ahead and take these guys up to uh, holding cells. We searched the cells prior to putting the inmates in the holding cells. That way we know if there's anything discovered in the holding cells. After we remove them, that was theirs. Uh, it's just a, what we call sanitizing the cell. How about you? Get anything up your ass? I can take it to the x-ray if you want. That'd be a lot easier. Do you volunteer the x-ray? Oh, yeah. How about you, man? 
You volunteered x-ray too? Okay, where's the cup at, man? When inmates commit crimes in Pelican Bay, such as possession of weapons, assault, or murder, they are prosecuted in court, just like criminals on the street. Uh, the big case we got is the Haddock's trial. It's getting ready to happen on the 19th. John Kubacek is Pelican Bay's liaison between the prison and the local courts. As crimes occur within the prison, uh, they're referred to my office, and I screen them and refer them as uh, is appropriate to the district attorney's office for possible prosecution. Now, can you blow that up at all? Uh, yes, um, okay. Today, the squad is studying video of an alleged stabbing in order to prepare a case of attempted murder against an inmate. An inmate uh, named Haddix, uh, he's uh, part of a uh, white supremacy group. Uh, himself and another inmate, another gang member, attacked an inmate uh, on the general population yard. It's probably the worst stabbing I've ever seen on the yard. Um, he did live through it, uh, but we are now taking them to trial for attempted murder. Inmate Haddox is serving time for assault and arson and will not be eligible for parole until 2010. I'd like to get one more picture right in that same time frame. Okay. He's facing a life sentence under California's uh, three-strike law right now. Despite seemingly incontrovertible video evidence, crimes committed in prison aren't always easy to prosecute. When you investigate a crime in town, you tend to have witnesses that are willing to testify uh, that they saw something. Inside a prison, you can rarely get another inmate to testify against another inmate. Each day, dangerous inmates are shackled and transported out of Pelican Bay to a local court. All of our inmates can be dangerous here at Pelican Bay, but we have some who we have some real security concerns about in terms of their gang leadership and, and uh, the types of um, uh, things that they may try to stage within the courthouse. This transportation process is perhaps the greatest challenge to the security of the prison. These inmates rarely have anything to lose. They're usually doing long sentences. Uh, many of them are, most all of them are violent. And so anytime you take them out of the secure setting of the prison, there's always that chance for escape, trying to assault somebody, or for possibly a gang member attempting to break them out of prison. The public can find out when people are being transported. So we're pretty much on heightened alert anytime we take inmates to court. Today, inmate Courtney will go to court for a preliminary hearing on charges of attacking a correctional officer. We always check the records of the inmate prior to taking them out to uh, see what kind of gang affiliation they have, any prior escape attempts they may have had, uh, prior disciplinary violent history they may have had, and we use that in consideration with setting up the security detail for any transport. An armed convoy will accompany the transportation van throughout its journey. Any time you take an inmate outside the secure walls of the prison, um, you're basically creating a prison outside the prison with the transportation team. Um, they are now the secure walls of the prison rolling down the road. The route to the courthouse is changed daily. The transportation process is one of the best chances any of these inmates will have to escape. For the short, tense journey, this three-vehicle convoy serves as a maximum security prison on wheels. The van enters a secure port at the courthouse, and the inmate is quickly transferred to a holding cell to await his court appearance. Inmates remain secured in the courtroom and surrounded by Pelican Bay staff. We, uh, we maintain the inmates in full restraints as much as possible. They are not allowed to be out of restraints while in the courtroom. In the past, inmates have tried to attack witnesses and even attorneys during court sessions. At the conclusion of the court proceeding, the inmate is immediately transported back to the security of the institution. Next, the drug war inside a maximum security prison. Like any police department, the squad constantly battles the possession and sale of illegal drugs. We're getting a little bit of it, but we know we're not getting all of it. And we want to really try to improve it. We want to stop the drugs from coming in the institution. That's our goal. Because the inmates are so adept at hiding drugs, the squad often uses drug-sniffing dogs from the nearby Brookings Police Department. Today, the squad will perform a shakedown inside the most secure housing unit in the SHU. SHU is really the Department of Corrections prison 
within the prison. It is here where the most brutal of California's gangs are housed. The 33 prisons in California depend on the security housing unit at Pelican Bay to house and separate the most dangerous, uh, problematic inmates throughout the system. You conduct unfold body searches on the inmates before they're removed. Pull them out of the cell. Stick them up, turn around to your feet, wiggle your toes. Right, right. Squat and cough. Spread them and cough. Spread them and cough. Sleight of hand. They're quick. They can hide things that have taken their stock off, hide it down here, bring it back out. You can't always see that. So it's a good idea to repat them down. Always pay attention. Always have one baton drawn, one officer, hands on escort. Get to be alert. While their cells are searched, the inmates will be placed in adjacent visiting cells where their conversations with each other can be monitored. Be a whole lot of a whole lot of information shared. So hopefully we can pick up something. Be cool. You just ear tag that and take a look at it. That's a hype kit. So you get in narcotics in your blood. He's drinking his wine right now, so they manufacture alcohol because he knows we can't rush in there and get him. They're dumping their prudel. They say they don't want to drink it. They're trying to show us respect by dumping it. They can drink it if they want to. The inmates that occupy this cell, they had uh, inmate manufactured alcohol, and they had it stored in those uh, milk cartons right there. So they dumped them right away into the uh, toilet in an effort to flush them, but uh, the water was already off and they were unable to do that. Officer Jim Dejeuner is known for his aggressive stance on alcohol manufacturing. I'm noted for enforcing a zero tolerance for any kind of substance abuse, and that uh, includes alcohol possession. Zero tolerance, Jim. Zero tolerance for alcohol or narcotics in an institution. And, and you may think that sounds funny. Everybody should have zero tolerance, but Jim takes it to a whole new level. Uh, he wants to get it. Did you give that off to somebody? Yeah, I got it. Good. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> he admitted it's his. You can see the residue right there around the base of the pipe. If it's there, he's going to find it, and he's going to get it, and he's happy when he does it. I'll get this uh, written up for heroin possession first, and then we'll go back and get this. He's a he's super tough, super tough guy. In addition to the drugs and alcohol, the squad discovers a deadly weapon. With part of his uh, medical tag. Pull it out. Open it out. That is a perfect spear that can be speared right through the perforated holes of these cellars. On frequent occasions, officers will come up and stick their face right up in the cell because they can't see in to talk to you or to an inmate. They can get you right in the eye. By aggressively policing the shoe, the squad can disrupt the flow of communication among Pelican Bay's notorious prison gangsters. Sergeant Hank Aiken specializes in gang intelligence. The inmates in the other institutions, they strive to get here. They strive to, hey, I want to go lock up and I want to be with the top name gangsters of their particular gang. Any Pelican Bay inmate officially validated as a member of a prison gang may be given an indeterminate term in the shoe. If his sentence is life, he could spend the rest of his days in the shoe. They get about an hour, hour and a half a yard a day. They come out for a shower. They either go by themselves or if they have a cell partner, that's the only people that they have physical contact with. When we bring them out of the sections, we strip search them. Everywhere they go and everything they do outside of that little section that they're in, they're handcuffed. Because of the, the violence associated with prison gangs, we have to house them that way. It's for other inmates' protection, it's for our own protection. The concentration of gang leadership in the SHU makes this facility California's underworld headquarters. You end up with a group of validated gang members from the major prison gangs that are congregated together. And uh, their leadership is here under one roof. It's good in a sense that it isolates them from uh, the other 32 prisons in the system. But it's bad in the sense that now you have all of this leadership and all of this intelligence to monitor. If you've got the president of a corporation or the, or the head of a gang housed here, then people are going to come here to get their information. Inmates are going to have to get messages from other institutions to here. Gang leaders here send out information, notes, messages. Actually, as secure as the shoe is, I think it's rather easy for these inmates 
to communicate with other inmates throughout the state of California and to communicate their gang business on the streets. One of the ways is through the mail. Um, we screen and monitor mail, but you're talking about a couple of thousand inmates here at Pelican Bay and we can't look at every piece of mail. One of the other ways that they are able to communicate is through the visits. They do communicate and it's a, it's a constant cat and mouse game. When we return, a coded message reveals a savage plot. What we've determined these to be are hit lists for two of the prison gangs. And there's approximately five to six hundred names on here. During the search of the security housing unit at Pelican Bay, an inmate has passed a desperate message to the squad. Looks like we got a kite. A kite is a note similar to uh, what you see here. Small writings they use to trans um, give information back and forth to each other with. It's the internet of the institution. According to the kite, the inmate believes he's been targeted for a hit. The squad concentrates their search on an adjacent pod. An inmate said his life's in danger and he believes that these guys in here have a weapon. The secondary search leads the squad into the cells of some of the highest ranking gang leaders. This is the black hand of the Mexican Mafia. From this cell, he controls a lot of the drug activity that happens in San Diego County. And from this cell, he's authorized assaults on other inmates in other prisons. He's authorized assaults and hits on people on the streets. After hours of searching, additional weapons are found. What'd you find, Chris? Inside the dictionary. What these guys do, they'll hide weapons, kites inside the little dictionary. That looks like a piece from a set of glasses. Set of glasses. One guy took that earpiece and sharpened it into a point. Inside one of the world's most secure facilities, a simple pair of eyeglasses has unlimited value and potential. That insignificant a uh, set of glasses was turned into two weapons that we know of that we were able to find and use for who knows what else in the other cell. A potential clue to a murder conspiracy is encrypted in code. He knows who that is or he knows what that address is, but we don't. And that's part of what we're up against is when we find things like this is trying to break their codes and trying to figure out who it is they're writing to or who it is they're having communications with. Back at the squad room, the seizures from the shoe will be booked into evidence for criminal prosecution. It's black tar heroin. Uh, heroin is a drug of choice in uh, Pelican Bay. We'll photograph it, test it, and uh, we'll send it off to uh, the Department of Justice for a latent prints and try to determine who sent it in. It weighed out at, all at approximately two grams. Down in the Los Angeles area, it'll, uh, it'll go for anywhere well, usually around for eighty dollars. In addition to the heroin stash, the squad has made another startling discovery in the shoe. We had an inmate that secreted in his rectum was a bindle that was about the size of a package of roll aids. He uh, retrieved it from his rectum, went to pass it to another inmate. It was five scrolls, approximately eighteen inches long by about two inches wide, that had about. I'd say about 600 names that were on the Nuestra Familia, Nuestra Raza hit list. All these people were targeted for assault. We'll notify all the other agencies and the other security squads and the gang investigators throughout the state that, hey, we've got this hit list and we'll get them copies so that they can see if they've got anybody on the hit list as well to protect them. Lieutenant Marquez's work today may have saved the lives of those who value life the least. A number of years ago, I lost my sister as a result of gang violence. She was shot by a gang member and killed. In one sense, I'm able to uh, justify that in my own mind and not harbor um, a hatred or intense anger or bitterness towards these gang members and that I understand that he did what they do. Gang members victimize, terrorize, and kill people. That's what they do. Given the opportunity, although they'll say thank you and smile to my face, given the opportunity, they just as soon shove a knife in my back as well. When we return, an inmate faces life for a crime committed inside Pelican Bay.
Today, inmate Haddox will have his day in court. If convicted, he faces a life sentence here at Pelican Bay. Unlike a city police force, when the squad gets a conviction, it does not take the criminal out of their community, but brings him back. You don't end up at Pelican Bay without a reason. That's the lifestyle and the life choice that you've made. So you're going you're gonna to continue in that lifestyle and that life choice for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. When you first run into these convicts on the yard, they'll be telling you, don't tell me what to do, I'm my own man. Yet they all aspire to be these high-tech gangsters that are told what to do by somebody else all the time. They're told who to stab, who not to stab. It, it's, it's a sad lifestyle to have a friend all your life that uh, all of a sudden now you're told you have to stab that person. And if you don't stab that person, we're going to stab you or we're going to kill you. You just have a violent element in here. and You always have to be aware of your surroundings because the first opportunity they get, they're going to they're attack. So you just never turn your back on them. You're just always aware. Despite a revolving door of criminals and a never-ending caseload, the squad approaches their work like any other police force. Our purpose in life is to come out and bust those guys. Step on through in front of the officers. The squad here at Pelican Bay, they're dedicated and committed to what they do. They train hard, they work hard, and they provide a real service to the, to the whole organization and to the other men and women that are out here on the line. They make all of our jobs more safe. Uh, and often they do it at uh, significant risk to their own personal safety. When we come to work, once we hit the gate, when we come on, check in and everything, is that you better be on your toes because anything can happen at any time. These guys are constantly out there plotting. So it takes a concerted effort, not only by the squad, but by the staff that work the units, that walk the tiers, that, that talk to the inmates and deal with them. So that when they give us the pieces of the information, we can put together the puzzle and then we can, we can respond in an appropriate manner to stop the narcotics coming in, to stop assaults, uh, to try to provide as, as safe an environment here at Pelican Bay as we can, um, despite housing some of the most violent offenders in the state of California.